kids and welcome to the wizarding world of prime harry potter i'm sister dumbledee and i brought with me today larmione and of course larzy potter yeah, yeah. you have been assigned to the conducting with magical creatures course 101 where you will learn the great magical art of conducting craft To begin, all students need a wand. Don't fret if you haven't been to Ollivander's yet. Today, you can use anything as a wand. A crumpled up aluminum foil wand. A spoon. A rolled up paper. A chopstick. A spatula. A lightsaber. Magical wand. And if you want a wand like mine, I'll show you how to make one at the end of this video. But it requires a hot glue gun, paint, and some time to dry. Pause the video right here to find your magic wand. Do you have a wand? I want to explain why conducting is important. Larzy and Larmione, I want you to sing the song Popcorn Popping. Ready? Go. together at all because nobody chose the speed, also known as the tempo. This time I want you to watch my conducting wand and we'll see if you can sing together. One, two, ready, go. I looked out the window and what did I see? Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Much better. Time to get your wand. Let's start with the wand hold. We want a nice relaxed grip, not like a fist grip. So take your wand and place it gently with the bottom part in your hand and wrap your fingers around softly like this. attention please remember that today is the final day to earn points for your house cup here is the final point breakdown as of right now we have raven crumb in the lead followed by slither pants then gryffindor and in last place hufflepuff but there's still time to earn a few more points First, I will teach you the two beat conducting pattern, the lazy U or the swing shape. It goes out, then back, out, then back. Do you see how that makes a swing or a lazy U? Wands up, your turn. Here we go. Out, then back, out, then back. One, two. One, two, excellent. Let's try this by speaking the words to a two beat song when I am baptized while conducting at the same time. Remember, this is the song that starts, I like to look for rainbows whenever there is rain. Ready? Let's get our ones ready. I like to look for rainbows 
Whenever there is rain, and ponder on the beauty of an earth made clean again. I want my life to be as clean as earth right after rain. I want to be the best I can and live with God again. Excellent. I think that was worthy of 15 points for Gryffindor. You're catching up with Slither Pants. I think we're ready for the challenge. The challenge is we are going to sing the song when I am baptized and conduct at the same time. So look at the bottom of the screen for my wand and see if you can follow along and sing when I am baptized at the same time. susceptible to his screams, you can always wear these headphones. Uh. The mandrake scream is so powerful, it causes some people to faint. We'll need to calm it down with a song so we can safely take it out of the pot and plant it in the ground. For this song, we'll use the three beat conducting pattern or the triangle. It goes like this, one's up, down, side, up, down, side, up. Do you see how it makes three beats or three sides of the triangle? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, speak with me a three beat conducting song. I love to see the tempo. Let's see if we can speak it and conduct at the same time. And this time it starts on the final beat of the triangle. I love, just like that, try it again. I love, and then we start with our one, two, three. Here we go. I love to see the temple. I'm going there someday. To feel the Holy Spirit, to listen and to pray. For the temple is a house of God, a place of love and beauty. I'll prepare myself while I am young. This is my sacred duty. Did you get it? Oh no, the mandrake is starting up again. Let's see if we can calm it down with singing. I love to see the temple and conducting at the same time. If you know the words to verse two, you can sing and conduct it also. If not, just do your super three beat pattern conducting.
I think that's 20 points for Gryffindor. Here he is, happily planted in the ground. I think the mandrake could sense what the song was about. Have you ever felt a special peace when you see a temple or walk around its grounds? Maybe you've been to a temple open house. When you're older, you'll get to do special work for yourself and for others in the temple. In the video, it even showed the temple I was married in, the San Diego Temple. I hope you're making plans right now to prepare to enter the temple, which is the house of God. On to our final conducting pattern. This will be the most challenging of all. So for this, we are going to head to the Forbidden Forest for an expert conductor to teach us. Before we go on with our four beat pattern, how do we know which pattern we're supposed to use with our music? Go to your music and toward the top of the page, you'll find the time signature, which is two numbers stacked on top of each other like a fraction. Most of the time, especially in the hymnal and children's songbook, you'll see these fractions, a four four, a three four, and a two four. We're gonna focus on that top number. The four is our four beat pattern, the three is our three beat pattern, and the two is our two beat pattern. Or if you see a big letter C, that also means common time for the four beat pattern. Now if you are really confused or worried, you could even use a two beat pattern for any song if you conduct slowly and carefully with one beat out one beat in for every measure is just one hand movement. Or if you know about reducing fractions, you could always use a two beat swing pattern instead of a four beat pattern. Here's how you can think of the four beat conducting pattern as a sandwich cut. First we cut down, then to the side, then the other side, then up. Or we can think of our regular conducting pattern chart. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's try this conducting pattern with the song, I Know My Father Lives.
Here before you are my award-winning white pumpkins. Did you know that they are actually white pumpkins? It's true. They make the most delicious treats. I'm going to use my pumpkins to bake pumpkin donuts for the winning house. Hey, who goes there? Stinkerbell, is that you? Stinkerbell is a house skunk who unfortunately has the ability to poof in and out of wherever she wants. Have you been taking my pumpkins? Let's. I won't have enough to make the treats. But if you help, we could catch her. Use the sweeping motion of your wand, like we've been practicing with our conducting, to point out Stinkerbell. And when you find her, say, stupefy. Are you ready? Now, Stinkerbell, I will release you if you promise to retrieve all of my pumpkins. Got it? Okay. Renovate. Ah, oh, thank you. Now, off you go. There. That darn skunk. If you want a pet, I can always send Stinkerbell to your house. Here is our final challenge. The song, The Iron Rod, has two conducting patterns in it. It starts with the three beat pattern. To neat by seer of olden time, a vision came from God, wherein the holy word sublime was shown an iron rod. Then in the middle, it switches to the four beat pattern. Try it with me, get your wands up. Hold to the rod, the iron rod. Tis strong and bright and true. The iron rod is the word of God. Twill safely guide us through. If you can do this challenge song with the three beat, changing to four beat in the middle while singing, perhaps we'll score a few points for Gryffindor. That's 20 points for Gryffindor. Yay! Quidditch! Almost forgot. Lars has his championship Quidditch match right now. Hurry, let's go get ready. And you can come with us to cheer him on.
that brings the Gryffindor house total up 30 points. That means you won the house cup. Oh. Here are your pumpkin donuts as promised. Dig in. Yummy! Great job conducting today. I hope you have a long future of conducting. Whether it's at your own home by yourself, practicing in front of a mirror, being a music leader for your at-home church, practicing conducting in primary as you sing, or conducting in front of others as part of church meetings. I testify to you that music is a powerful vehicle that invites the spirit and testifies to those listening that our Savior lives and loves us. In Doctrine and Covenants 25, 12, it says, For my soul delighteth in the song of the heart. Yea, the song of the righteous is a prayer unto me, and it shall be answered with a blessing upon their heads. Music is indeed a blessing, and I pray that you and I can continue to hone that and use that in our lives to bless those around us. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Creamy potato. give you a quick tutorial on how to make these amazing magical wands. So to start, you're going to want to get some dowels. These are wooden dowels. These ones are about as thick as a pencil, uh, but I've also used ones that are thicker than these, and you can probably go a little bit thinner and still have it work. And then you want some thick paper. This isn't super floppy like paper that comes out of your printer. This is thicker. This is cardstock. And if you look on the package, this kind that I like to use is 65 pound cardstock, so it's super hard to fold and it's going to make a nice thick wand. But you can also try it with different kinds of paper if that works for you. And then some white glue. Maybe you have white glue left over from last school year that you can use. And then you might want to use a glue gun for some decorations and I'll show you how to do that. Here is how it starts. This is my page just with some white glue that I'm just brushing around and you don't even have to use a brush. You can just squiggle it around if you have one of the squeeze tops. And I'm gonna take my stick and I'm gonna get it started in a corner. I'm gonna roll it up pretty tightly I'm going to push the stick back down here a little bit to even it out. And there we have it. This is the start to our stick. So now I'm going to push this corner down, make sure that stays 
nicely. I'm going to twist it a little bit. And you don't have to do this twist part. But I think it makes it look a little bit more like wood, like a wooden wand with all of these bends in it, these twists, these knots that stick out. And you can kind of work it a little bit, add a little bit of extra paper if you wanted to add an extra rectangle to this end to give it a kind of thicker handle, or you can wait to do that until you do the glue gun. And we are starting to get the shape of a wand. These are examples of what it looks like after it's already dry. Now we're gonna move on to painting them. Here it is, my first coat of paint. I paint all of my wands black to start. And this is actually a house paint that I used to paint my Dr. Seuss playroom. But you can also use acrylic craft paint. Finger paint is not going to work very well because it's washable. And we're trying to add a first coat that's going to be thick and it's going to add to the shininess of your wand. And you really want whatever color you put on top of this to be vibrant and just really rich. And I think that a black is the best start to any wand. So all of my wands start out black, then I have them dry. So the steps I do it in is first I paint it black, then I add glue gun, then I start painting. You could also do a coat of colored paint first, like paint the whole thing pink, then do some glue gunning up here, then paint that glue gun part, then do another glue gun part, then paint that. You can really do the steps in any order that you think is great. You could also add puff paint to the top layer after you've already painted it. And so you could have the polka dots, the stripes, everything could be in puff paint instead of hot glue gun. And maybe your parents would like that more because you can use puff paint and not get hurt, you got get burnt by the glue gun. And then you can add sequins or jewels or sparkles or any other designs or things that you want to to your wand. Here's what my wands look like. I have the wood one where I made the glue gun do all of these stick looking shapes and then I painted over it with kind of this coppery bronze. And then the tip I just did is a glue gun ball tip. And then for the top part, I just found a wood chip in my yard. A nice super thick one and I glued it in there really firmly. Then I had a princess one where I made some swirls with my glue gun and then did some cool painting. I made this part extra thick with the glue gun. I just kind of gooped it down and then I used a toothpick to kind of smooth it out because when you touch hot glue gun glue, it really burns. You don't want to touch it with your fingers. But if you're trying to shape it, you can, you can use a tool to help you. And then I have this cool jewel at the top. I love the jewels. And the bottom, it looks like, I found a really cool marble and put that in for the bottom. This one I decided to go with this cool spiky polka dot look. These are sticking out from the glue gun dots and I painted it over it and again made a little blobby part up here, which I thought was cool because sometimes they like to have like an extra thick handle and another jewel. And this is a glue gun blob at the end. This one has pearls. I decided to go pearls. This kind of looks Slytherin to me. I kind of swirled everything down, kind of snake-like. This is um, a little piece of wood I found in one of my fake flower baskets. And I painted it silver and put a big pearl at the top. A big marble I found for the top of this one. Here's how I glue gunned this one with just some different stripes. Kind of an extra special handle that I'm trying to do for each of them. And then I went down with a little jewel for the tip. Here's one, there's another pearl, some swirls, lots of blues and blacks. Here's a gold one with some designs for the handle, a jewel, and then a really cool stone I found in one of my tiny thing boxes. This one, another jewel for the end, and I made kind of this fiery look 
at the end, and that's where the fire comes out of your wands, right? And then this giant cool pearl I found in one of my treasure boxes. And then this, I just sewed this, because I like to have a way I can bring this with me, like when I bring it to primary and we use it for conducting. And so I just found some velvet at a fabric store, and then some fake leather, also at the fabric store, and I just sewed it over, and I sewed a little handle, and then I have a little tie for it so I can just carry this with me when I go to primary and just pull it out. And then I can also grab this and flip it open, and I can hang it up on the board. So that's pretty cool too. That's it. I hope this was helpful and that you'll be able to make some super wands. Finito!